I'm Jason Tamerick. Once you've found a location that you believe is going to be suitable for the needs of your production, the next step is to negotiate the use of that location with the location owner. And in this lesson, we're going to explore how to approach a location owner, how to use a location agreement that protects both you and the owner's rights, how to deal with any problems that arise with that owner, and how to make the shoot the best possible experience for everyone involved. All right, let's say you found a great location on your scout, and now you're ready to reach out to the owner of that location. Well, here are some tips on what to say. When you're meeting a location owner for the first time, you have to immediately instill a sense of trust. You have to be able to make them so comfortable so immediately, and you have to go through a series of steps as you introduce the project that will give them the information they need, but not scare them away. I'm always amazed at the people that open the doors to us. Um, you walk up to a door, you knock on it, they answer the door, hi, I'm Pete Smith from XYZ Productions, I'm, I'm scouting locations for a film. I'm not interested. Or, come on in. Come on in, you hear more often than I'm not interested. Um, you show them your ID. What I try to do is I keep a business card, I keep my license, and I keep my location manager's guild card and my Teamsters card all together. And I'll pull them out and I'll say, here's my identification so you know who I am. I also have taken to keeping um, uh, a link for my IMDB page. And I can, you know, if I sense any hesitation, I'll give them, show them my, my, my IDs, leave my business card, and I'll say, check out my IMDB or check out my website, call me back if you want me to come in. Um, that works 99% of the time if people are interested. They just want to make sure that you're legitimate. First and foremost, when you're meeting a location owner for the first time, forget the terminology behind the camera. Forget your terms. Try and step into normal conversation. Even though we've all watched a ton of behind the scenes making of DVDs, not everyone really knows what a condor is. Not everyone really knows what a tech scout is. Not everyone knows what the swing gang does. Not everyone knows what a prep day is going to involve. Pre-rigging, pre-light, all of those terms are going to sound very foreign to a person and immediately turn them off. So speak in very descriptive terms without getting lost in the film lingo. So if you were answering the door of a private home. I would suggest, Hi, I'm Kathy McCurdy. I'm a location scout, and in case you haven't had one come to your neighborhood before, I'm really surprised. You have a great look here. And it's so great. It's exactly what we're looking for for our independent film. Just so you know, my independent film is a really low budget project. That means we don't have a big studio name attached. It also means we don't have a lot of money. But if you are interested at all in having your house used as a filming location, I'd love to talk to you some more about that. Episodic television is really a very challenging uh, medium for location managers because of the time frame. Uh, because we need to find locations quickly, because our prep is eight days, meaning we get the script on day one, day two we have a meeting, day three we're in a van. Day five we're on a tech scout, then the next day one we're filming. So it is difficult um, sometimes to seem not desperate when you're talking to different kinds of property owners, commercial businesses and whatnot. So basically, you just have to find a way within yourself to be as cheerful and positive and um, gregarious as possible with your property owners to make them feel that, oh, well, whether we use this location or not, it's really no skin off your nose, even though your gut is telling you, oh, please, oh, please, say yes. When you have some interest from a private property owner, a homeowner, or a business owner, the next best thing to do is probably just summarize the script. Give them an idea of what the story is about. Sometimes the owner will want to see the script. I ask permission from the, of the producer of the production company if I can do that. If we get down the road far enough that it looks like we want to use the location, I will, give them the, I will show them the pages. With the government agencies, if they ask for it, you pretty much have to give it to them. 
Uh, but with individuals, I try not to give them the script pages unless it's, it's something that I think is totally appropriate. You're going to know pretty immediately from their initial reaction if it's something that they're going to be comfortable with. Remember, you're going to meet resistance. And even from homeowners, there are going to be certain scenes, certain actions, certain activities that they might find offensive or they might find difficult to deal with. There are always certain things that are going to be taboo to certain people. As a location scout, I approached a, a number of middle-class homes where we had to recreate a murder scene. And it was a terrible, bloody, kidnapping, hostage, throat-slashing murder scene. And I probably went to five to ten different homeowners in that neighborhood before I found anyone who was comfortable, who could make that difference between fiction in fact, a lot of people just had a gut reaction to the content and didn't feel comfortable having that in their house or part of their home, their safe place. So be prepared that sometimes the subject matter is going to have an effect on whether a property owner wants to say yes or no. Once you describe the overall storyline, Talk to them specifically about what the scenes are that you want to film there. Let them know if it's dramatic dialogue. Let them know if it's a party sequence that goes all night with loud music and kegs of beer and frat boys carrying on. Let them know if it's all night shooting. Let them know some of the things that affect their decision making. Those are the things that are important for them to decide whether they can tolerate it and whether they will welcome you into their house or not. Oftentimes a writer wants us to find a location that's for a specific time period. So when I approach a homeowner who might have a house that's let's say postmodern, post 60s, maybe a federal looking house, clearly the way people live in today's society, it, the interior of their homes are not gonna reflect exactly what we're looking for because they're living in today. So they're gonna have flat screen TVs, modern appliances, m furniture that's comfortable for the family that they have living in that home. So when I approach a, a, a homeowner about filming, I always explain to them, it's like a tornado that's about to hit their house. A really nice tornado, but a tornado nevertheless. We're gonna ask them what seems like outrageous things. Can we paint your, can we paint your house? Can we remove your carpet? Can we remove all of your furniture and store it somewhere and bring in all new furniture. Would you mind staying in a hotel for a few days because we basically want to take over your entire house. So each homeowner you have to approach differently. Obviously some of them are doing it because it's a financial incentive to do it. Some people are doing it because they enjoy the excitement of having a movie company come and the notoriety of being able to say, hey, such and such a film was shot at my house or such and such a TV show was shot here. There are many times when you have to go to a location owner and say, we want to remove the wall between your living room and dining room. We want to take out the columns on your front porch and add a different column. We want to do major construction to your, to your house. How do you do it? You just walk in and you just tell them. And uh, uh, if they're not taken to a back, you just pursue it with them. You work with your construction coordinator, with your production designer. If the walls you're taking out, let's say, are not load-bearing, it's not a big deal. If they're load-bearing, then you have to deal with the building inspector and the local jurisdiction, and you have to involve those folks. But um, I'm a firm believer in full disclosure. As soon as you know that you want to do something, you go to the location owner and let them know what you want to do. It's amazing how many people will let you take out a wall in the middle of their house or to add a porch or to take a window out and just make it a wall. Uh, people are, people are amazing as far as what they'll let you do. Just go in, lay it all out, here's what we want to do, what do you think? When you're talking to a private property owner, honesty is the first and foremost attitude you bring to every conversation. It's important in so many ways. Remember, this is a business built on relationships. This person has to trust you. So start from that very, very good place of integrity and honesty. There's another aspect to the importance of being honest and talking to a property owner. 
this industry doesn't always have the best reputation. And you're going to bump up against this. People are going to be critical of Hollywood. People are going to be critical of filmmakers. Maybe they've had a bad experience one time before when someone wanted to film at their house and it wasn't handled well or they ended up with broken property or things weren't replaced and restored. It's important that you represent the best that this industry can mean to people. Other people are going to experience that through your relationship with them. So always start from that place of honesty. You want to tell them really what's going to happen in the scenes, what the impact is going to be, and how you're going to handle it and manage it. Remember that the process of shooting a movie is relatively foreign to people outside the film industry. So be aware that the experience can be overwhelming for the location owner. Every property owner is going to be taken by surprise the day you roll up with the trucks. No matter how well you have described it to them, the whole sense of the organized chaos of trucks and people the morning you show up at the set is something beyond the normal person's experience. It's crazy. It's upsetting. It's disturbing. It's disrupting to them. So be very honest in how you prepare them, how you describe it, and make sure you are the first person on the set that morning so you're there to do some hand-holding. No matter what you tell people, they're always amazed by the number of people. You can say, I'm going to have 200 people here. When 200 people show up, they're amazed. They're blown away. I'm going to have 3,000 feet of trucks. They're amazed. Um, all you can do is try to, try to you know, hold their hand, try to buy the time that you need for them to calm down, try to just talk them through it, try to help them realize that what you're going to do is not going to destroy their house. You want to be completely honest with a property owner from the very beginning. You don't want to say, it's a small crew, it's only four minutes on the screen, it's three sentences on the script page. You, you don't want to be too casual in how you describe the scene to a property owner. You want to be very honest and not minimize it. Don't just say it's a small crew. How many people are going to be in the house, including the cast? Let them know the scope of the work. Because no matter how well you prepare a property owner, they are not ready for what really happens on the shoot day. And it's better for that owner to know what they're getting into before the production arrives than for them to get angry or upset the day of the shoot. Because an angry owner can create a lot of problems for your production, which is why a location agreement is so important. All right, everyone, that's all we have time for today. If you want to see the rest of this video tutorial, if you want to read the exclusive companion guide and download projects that you can use to practice these techniques at home, be sure to check out the full course at filmskills.com. Now, if you really want to improve the quality of your productions, I'll take you much deeper into the entire filmmaking process in the paid course at Film Skills Unlimited, where I partnered with Aerie, Audio-Technica, Panavision, Matthew Studio Equipment, Ledgo, and Kinoflow to produce an online training curriculum so complete that over 115 film schools, universities, and film commissions use my program. Plus, I sat down with over 70 Academy Award and Emmy-winning filmmakers who reveal the techniques they use to produce the biggest TV shows and movies ever made. So join over 20,000 filmmakers and learn how to write better screenplays, become a more effective director on set, master advanced cinematography techniques, unlock the full capabilities of your camera and lens, improve your shots with Hollywood lighting techniques, learn how to record audio, design sets, edit, and much more. And as a special bonus, I've also negotiated special discounts on software and gear just for Film Skills members. And as a member, you also have exclusive access to hundreds of projects and exercises to practice and hone your skills. Plus, nearly 2,000 pages of my illustrated companion guides, personal mentoring, job shadows, and much more. So check out filmskills.com for more information. And by the way, you're also invited to join my free one-hour filmmaking course where I share my top 10 secrets to achieving a professional look that helped me grow a career shooting in over 35 countries for top studios and brands. 
So check out the link below to register for my free one hour filmmaking course and learn how to become a better filmmaker at Film Skills, the online film school built by filmmakers for filmmakers. <laughs>